Hello guys, uh, welcome to TV Presents Tech View. Another episode. Uh, I'm I'm the Saif Majumdar. Um, so in this episode, I'll show you guys how you can upgrade your existing Active Directory environment. That means how you can upgrade and migrate from one version to another version. So if you have uh, your Active Directory environment is in 2016 or 2019 mixed mode. And then now you are planning to upgrade it to 2022. 20, uh, so I'll show you step by step how we're gonna upgrade that. Uh, let us get started. And before I start it, I want to share some information with you guys. And this migration will be, um, I'll share the screen. And this migration will be side-by-side uh, -side migration. So first we have to understand the, the architectural design of the Active Directory. So basically Active Directory, whenever you have an existing Active Directory, that means you have a forest and you have a domain. And under one forest, maybe you can have a multiple domain or maybe one domain. So based on the structure, I'll just give an example of some multi-domain multi, um, with under one forest. So you see here, the root is forest and then ELS.com. So that means the forest name is ELS.com and also under ELS.com, there is a domain name called ELS.com. And then under ELS.com forest, there is another domain, which is called multi-domain, right? So ELSTech.com and ELSBees.com. So whenever you have an Active Directory environment, that means your Active Directory environment is maintaining uh, some roles, and that's called a FISMO role. So Active Directory has five fixed role maintained of entire Active Directory, uh, which is called flexible single master operator, which is called FISMO. So what those five FISMO roles? The five FISMO roles is schema naming master, domain naming master, um, infrastructure master, rate relative ID master, and PD simulator. So I'm going to explain uh, how those roles are sitting on the domain controller. So for, for example, um, ELS.com under forest, the domain name also ELS.com. And that ELS.com domain has a three domain controller. You can have multiple five domain controller, 10 domain controller, 20 domain controller, it doesn't matter. Why you need to have the, like too many multiple uh, like domain controller? The reason is to um, to have a what is called redundancy and also um, for distributing some traffic. That's why you should have multiple domain controller. Um, like distribution some bandwidth and uh, like traffic to other through the other domain controller to another maybe applications. So for example, under this one, it has a total three domain controller under ELSTAG.com ELS has three domain controller. ELSBs has a three domain controller, just for an example. So then if you have a multiple domain controller under one forest, how your role gonna be stay on the uh, domain? So under the forest, there's two roles work, like uh, two FISMO role works under one forest, which is schema naming master and domain naming master. So a schema naming master role and domain naming master role works which level? In a forest level, in a forest level. So if you have a multiple forest, in that case, you can have multiple schema naming master and multiple domain naming master. But since I give you an example with one forest, in that case, only these two roles gonna work, only two roles gonna work for under this forest, but the other three roles gonna be, will have a, like uh, under each domain, under each domain will have the three roles. So infrastructure master, trade master, and PD simulator. So PD simulator, so all these three roles gonna be stay on any one of the domain controller. Or it can have like any one of the domain controller. You see, I give an example, maybe these three roles is sitting on now DC number one, domain controller number one. For this domain, maybe these three roles is sitting on this is number two. In in this domain, maybe PD simulator is sitting on 
domain uh, domain control number one. Red master is sitting on uh, domain control number three, and infrastructure master sitting on. Oh, sorry. It's actually it should be here. Yeah, like this. Sitting on here. This is number two. It can be, but whatever the domain controller you have, PD simulator that gonna be your primary domain controller. So it can be like this. All three gonna be stay in one domain controller, or it can be stay like one on DC one, one in DC two, and DC three. Or if you have a four, maybe another another four one is, doesn't have any kind of role. It doesn't matter. So it, I believe you understand these three. And only the other exceptional is if whatever the domain controller is having this role, PD, PD simulator, and that that domain controller is going to be considered as a primary domain controller. So we will see actually how it's look like, and I'll give you some other, other example. So if you have only one forest, which is ls.com and only one domain, ls.com, in that case, the structure should be like this. The structure should be like this. And then, so I just give you some more example here. So one forest, one domain. That means forest name and domain name is same, right? And three domain controller. So all five roles can be still like this. Either it can be on DC1 or DC2 or DC3, or it can divide it into DC1, 2, 3. So which is like this, this is the example. You see here, this is the example. So in here, DC1 is holding PD simulator and also is holding domain naming master and schema naming master. So these three is under this one because it, these two means actually these two sitting here. So since this one is under this, that's why I'm showing here because on the domain controller, when you log in you, and you can check it. And the other two, infrastructure master and raid master, maybe infrastructure master is sitting on your DC number two and raid controller is sitting on this is number three. It can be like this structure or it can be like this structure. It doesn't matter. So this is about five FISMO role. And also I'm gonna explain a little bit about the FISMO role. What does, uh, what kind of uh, roles it, 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 or like this five uh, FISMO role. So the schema master. Schema master basically what uh, it can give you so schema master role manage the read write copy of your active directory schema but as a schema we don't understand actually nothing right so i'm going to give you an example for example i have a domain controller this is our main domain controller so one of the users like say you you create a user right user user account service account so or any other account right so when you right click and go to the properties you're going to see here there's a member uh, all these are attribute profile, account, and all profile and all attributes can have multiple field, right? So when you input the data and it's going to save in a, so this data, the, the, the design, the format, the table is called a schema. The combination of attributes, right? So we can look at the example here. Like as an employee ID, phone numbers, email address, and login name, whenever you create a username, right? So that means there is a format, tabular format, and that's a schema. And domain naming master, what does it do? The domain naming master, is, the primary job is to check your domain. So for example, you have one forest, one domain, and in future, you are trying to create another domain under the same forest. In that case, what is going to do? So your domain naming master will gonna check the new name is available or like if if it's already assigned, then it's gonna check and verify and it's gonna tell you, okay, this name is already exist. So this is the basic job for this role, domain naming master. And red master, red master is like red, red master, the relative ID master assigning a block of security identifier seed two different DCs and they can use for newly created object. What does it mean? So when you created a um, computer object or user object, it's gonna create a seed ID. And also it has a relative 
ID, which is called domain identifier. So domain identifier plus relative ID equals to your seed ID, right? So that's called a red master to identify your object. And PD simulator. So PD simulator, the PD simulator is directly involved with authentication, that right? whenever you try to log in um, with, your, with, an, with any Active Directory users, and that time your computer will take some time. Why? Because it's taking time to verify. And that time PD simulator is work. So PD simulator is, you, you, is work for authentication for the user request, change password, manage group object, all those things the PD simulator will do. And infrastructure master, infrastructure master work under the forest. If you have a multiple domain, it can, so that's why I said the infrastructure master roles translates globally uni, uh, unique identifier, which is called GUID, GUID. Distinguished name DN. And, th and that's all, and if you want to know more about it, you can just Google it. Uh, what is the FISMO, what is the FISMO role function? So you, you'll get it, but I'm not going to, I'm not gonna spend too much time for this because my ultimate goal is to show you how you can upgrade. So for upgrading the systems, um, we're gonna do side-by-side -side upgrade or migration. In that case, we have to have, so if you have, I'm just going to give you some example here. What should be your plan? So step number one, for example, this is your existing server, which is containing Windows 2016, operating system if we first domain controller and you have a second domain controller in a different subnet or different data center you see here the ip subnet is different right ip subnet is different this one is starting with 192.168.1 another one is starting with 10.15.90.2 so just think about this is your primary domain controller it's sitting on your primary data center and this is your remote data center with different subnet you do second domain controller right and this one is um, have 2016 operating system and this one has a 2019 operating system. Now you are trying to migrate or upgrade both domain controller to 2022 operating system. In that case, what you can do, this is the first step. So what do you need? You need now total um, three machine or two machine. First, first create a two virtual machine with 2022 and just name it, so I name it as a, this is number three. And then, and then migrate all five FISMO role, maybe your FISMO role is here, or you can check maybe it can be divided into here and here, over there, so you can transfer it to here. So whenever you, first is, so, sorry, first you have to deploy a virtual machine with 2022 Windows Server operating system, and then, you have some common tasks to do, which is like all uh, general configuration, like turn off the firewall rules and like enable the RDP and uh, time, um, change the time zone and everything. And also assign the IP address. And, and then whenever it's, it, that's part is, and also change the machine name with your target machine name, which is DC03 or something like that. And then you have to install the Active Directory roles the way you did on here. When you first implement, whatever it's first implement here, the same way you have to install the Active Directory roles and then you have to add this machine as a domain controller. You have to promote this machine as a domain controller, which is called integrated domain controller, integrated Active Directory integrated domain controller. So that's how this machine will be connected with this two. And then, Next, what are you going to do? You're going to migrate all the FISMO roles from this machine to this machine. So whenever you, um, all FISMO roles, maybe you can have uh, two roles here, three roles here. So all, all you can just transfer all of them from both domain controller to the new one. So whenever it's done, then this one will be your primary domain controller, right? Because if all FISMO roles is now sitting here. And then the step number two, what are you going to do? The step number two is, since you everything is running from here, so you can now just decom, like decommission both domain controller and then power off both machine and then delete both machine from the environment. And then what are you gonna do? Create, deploy another two new virtual machine 
with new name and of course of, like definitely you're going to install windows 2022 because you are upgrading to everything 2022 right and assign the same kind of ips and then add this machine and then install the activity roles here and then add this machine with this domain control as an indicated domain controller do the same thing here add this machine install uh, after windows installation you have some general task whenever after like ip configuration all other things whenever you are done then install the activity roles here and then when activity roles is installed then promote it to domain controller which is integrated domain controller so so into whenever integrated domain controller and then now again you will get, we'll get back we'll get back to you previous to domain controller so that means now we have three domain controller and then, and then you can maybe transfer the role again from from the number three to number one, or you can distribute to number one and two if you want. And after that, if you said, okay, I don't need actually number three, then you can maybe become the number three and delete the number three, or you can keep it, it's up to you. So this is the actual plan to do. So this is the actual step. So just three steps you, you need to take. So in my case, actually, um, in my case, I have only one domain controller. If you look at here, I have only one domain controller. So now I'm deploying another domain controller, which is uh, ELS Texas ADDC01. Look at here. Oh, actually not 01. It's, I don't know why I name it 01. It's gonna be 02. Anyway, in the Texas 02. Okay. So the machine name is 02, right? So I have assigned the IP address as a IP number two. And then right now what I need to do, everything is done already. I changed the uh, time zone, also turn off the uh, firewall and also remote desktop enable and uh, IP configuration is done, name change is done. So now I just need to install the activity role. So how I can install it? So just click on dashboard, Go to the add and roles features and click next and click role based. Okay, next and then next. And the first one, the active directory domain services, active directory domain services, that's it, add it and then click next and then click next, click next and install. So it's gonna take, it's gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm going to pause the video. So whenever it's finished, I'll, I'll be back. All right, so the roles is installed. So now what do you need to do? You can see here after the roles is installed, it shows promote this server to a domain controller. You can click here or you can click here. You see, there's a notification. So same thing, same option you're gonna get it, right? So this window, I can close it. Now in here, just minimize this. So this is the familiar window I believe all of you knows because whenever you set up the, your first domain controller at that times, we select add a new forest. But right now we are going to upgrade and migrate, right? So before we upgrade and migrate, what the steps, the first steps is gonna add a new domain controller with existing infrastructure, right? So this is the new, this is gonna be our new domain controller, but this domain controller has a, Operating system 2020, uh, 2022. So what's the system to add a, a new domain controller with an existing environment? So in that case, what are you gonna do? You should choose the first option, which is by default selected, add a domain controller to an existing domain. So you should go for this one. And also, since this is the existing domain, you can, Click on select and you have to verify with your A account. So uh, your administrative account, but since this is my lab, that's why I'm using administrator. But in your case, maybe you wanna use your administrative account if you are employed for any organization. So I'm going to use my, uh, just uh, the, the main administrative account.
So administrator at ELS.com. This is my domain. So I found the domain here I click OK. So it's found the domain. Click simply next. So in here said domain uh, domain name system DNS server. Actually, I'm not going to do the DNS domain name server here because um, I have a separate DNS server. So DNS server is separate. This is just for Active Directory server. So only global catalog should be check mark. By default, it has two check mark. The third one is read only domain controller. If you want to add this machine or this domain controller just as a read only domain controller, in that case, you should select this one. But I'm not going to select this one because I want to add this domain control as an integrated domain controller. Integrated, that means whatever I have on my first one, and also if I make any change in the first one, it's going to be copy to the second one. It's going to be a mirror. It's going to be mirror, right? So, and if and also after this one build as a domain controller, and then whenever I want to build something like I want to create any user account, that going to be also reflect on the first domain controller, the, for the old one, right? So that's why just select on global catalog, no DNS server because DNS server is a separate machine. And in here, the type directory service is store mode, DR, uh, DSRM password. So this is a, another password, like when you, you can have any password here, but uh, since I said like, try to use the same password for all management type account, So I'm, I'm just assigning my common password. You have to remember what kind of password you're assigning. So then it says replicate from, from where it's gonna be take the data. Replicate, right? Mirror, replicate. So it's gonna be replicate from the old one. The old one, the old one we are not able to migrate, migrate yet. We just adding a new domain controller. After that, we're gonna do the migration process. So you can say any domain controller, or you can select directly the first one. Replicate from there. But if you have a multiple domain controller, in that in that case, you can say any domain controller. And even though if you have only one, still you can go for this one, any domain controller. Click next. And then this is the database folder, log folder, and sysbol folder is creating on the C drive of this machine by default. So you can change the location or you can just have the default one. I'm going with the default one. No worries. Enterprise level also do the same thing. No problem. Click next. Click next. And click next. Now it's checking the prerequisite, like if there is any kind of issue or error. So so everything looks good, only one um, alert sign, but it's not the, it's, it's not gonna have any problem. So you can just say install, that's it. So it's gonna take a little bit time. In the meantime, I'm going to pause the video recording and I'll be back whenever it's done. So um, the Active Directory second domain controller, which one is, we just recently added, so that one is done. So that means we just, we, are, we, we didn't do any kind of upgrade or migration. We just added a new domain controller with our existing activity environment. It can be second domain controller, third or fourth, whatever. In my case, it's the second because I have only one. But in your case, if you have a five, then you're gonna do the sixth one. If you have a seven or eight, you're gonna do the ninth one. So I did the second one, right? Okay. So it this one is added. Now I want to check. Um, you see here, Active Directory, Sites and Services, Security Users and Computers. So this is the new server. I'm just going to minimize it. Okay. So I have a,
So this one is 2019, right? When, when Burr, when does the version? If you can look at here, this is, oh, sorry, this is 2016. So from 2016, and this one is 2022, right? Okay, so if you go ahead and say advanced features, okay. So I have everything. This is our new domain controller, the one we just added, and it's the integrated domain controller, right? So if you look at here, programs data, uh, sorry, the user account, IT stop, service accounts, all the service accounts is here. I didn't create manually. So whatever I had before on in this one, you see, the service accounts, everything is copied to this one. So now if you want to create a new user, just for an example, test user, say so just, I'm just going to right click on a copy and you can say test admin or something. I don't know, like test admin and password. So I just created a test admin here, refresh. So this is our new domain controller. And on the new domain controller, I have created an account test admin. So it's gonna be replicate to the main one. Let's see. So it's not showing here. Refresh. So it's gonna take a little bit time to sync with the, it's gonna take a little bit time to sync with the new one. And now I'm going to create another user, another user here, say test admin 02, 02 on the old one, on the old one control, I'm going to create second user. Click next and finish. So it, it should this one should be reflect here, replicate to this new one and then the another user I created on the new one, that one should be reflect here, right? So if you come here, refresh, you see test admin zero two. I didn't create on here, it's just reflecting automatically here. And so this one is coming from the first domain controller. And this one I created here. And if you come back here, oh, sorry, here. It's gonna a little bit time to sync, but eventually it's gonna become here. Anyway, so now this is the integrated domain controller. It's the integrated domain controller. Uh, let me check our DNS server, oh, sorry. This is the DNS server. I have only one DNS server. Okay. So the new domain controller I have added here. I think this one, yep, this one. And the first one is this one. Don't fall in running primary, primary, don't transfer. Okay. So the zone transfer, you see here, IP address is 10.50.90. Mm. To issues, you can, you can say to any server. So whatever the server is, it doesn't matter. Anyway, if you don't understand this one, it's completely okay. So,
you can take a little bit of time, okay? That's okay. Um, so we have two domain controller now, right? So based on our step number one, this, right? So now what do you need to do? Migrate the all five is more role to the Windows Server 2022. So that means we have to transfer the FISMO role, but, but how are you gonna confirm? Right now I have only one domain controller. I know my all five FISMO role is in this one. I know right now because I have only one, but if you have a five, then how are you gonna know? So there is a command you will be able to know. So this is the steps actually uh, on my documents. So NTDS util, This is the transfer, okay. So before I transfer first, I have to check. So anyone from any one of the domain controller, you can go any one of them, new one or the old one, doesn't matter. So say for example, from the new one, right? So I'm going to minimize this one. Uh, you, just, you just need to run the CMD, CMD. Right click on it, run as administrator, and then in here you can say um, net dome query FISMO. Net dome query FISMO and hit enter. Then it will tell you actually which domain controller holding the five FISMO role. So what's the command? Net dome query FISMO. If you forget this command, you are completely okay. So how are you gonna memorize or if you forget it, how are you gonna run it? Just go to the Google and search FISMO, uh, FISMO role query command. That's it. Or FISMO role command. You're gonna get it. So net dome query FISMO. If you run it from any domain controller, it's gonna tell you or in my case, I have only one domain controller first time. So that's why I know my first domain controller is holding all five FISMO roles. But if you have a 10 domain controller, then how are you gonna know? So you can run this command from any domain controller, then you will be able to know actually which domain controller is holding what roles. So now I see all five roles is holding by my first domain controller. You can see here. ELS, BPW, VA, that is Virginia, LEDC01, right? So I'm gonna transfer the roles from, um, from my old one to new one. So what is the command for that? So this there's some other commands, which is you have to run NTDS YouTube. Now, again, there is, we have to run those commands up to here, then it will be the NTDS role or FISMO, sorry, FISMO role will be migrated from first domain controller to your second domain controller, which is newly newly built. And then again, do you need to memorize it? Do you, uh, if you forget it, what's gonna be happen? Nothing happened. So you can just search in Google, transfer FISMO role command. That's it, then you wanna get it. So NTDS YouTube, run first this one. And TDS YouTube, hit enter, then. Then roles and then connections. sorry roles now when you type roles and hit enter fismo fismo will go to the maintenance mode and now you say connections hit enter server connections now you have to provide the server connection instruction so connect to server
So where DC01 is the server computer name that will transfer the FISMA role to. So actually it's not DC01. In my case, I'm transferring to which one? DC number 02, right? So don't follow this one. So connect to server, connect to server, and then connect to server and then space. And what is the server name? My server name is this one. I'm just copying this one. So this is my server name. Hit enter. Okay, you can say maybe, sorry, run again. Dot ELS.com. Okay, so now you need to run. So then you, you need to just type the quit, Q-U-I-T, quit from here. Okay, then again, feasible and under maintenance mode. Now we're gonna start the transferring. Now we're gonna start the transferring. So for schema master, you have to type Transfer schema master, that's it, nothing else. It's pretty simple and pretty easy. Right click like this. Transfer schema master, hit enter. And then it's gonna ask you, are you sure you want to you want the role of schema master transfer to the server? Blah blah blah. This zero two euros.com. You say yes, I want. And it's done. Now the second one, which is your domain naming master, right? So transfer naming master, that's it. And type here and hit enter. It's gonna ask you transfer, yes, I want, yes. Done. And then, see, it's pretty easy and simple. And then raid master. So transfer raid master, hit enter, and yes, it's done. And then, PD simulator, transfer PDC, just, I'm just copying. You can type or copy whatever you want. You can do that. Okay, yes. And the last one, the last one is infrastructure master. Transfer infrastructure master, copy, and I'm going to paste it here. Or you can type, and yes. So now it's done, right? So you transfer all the roles. Is done. So what do you need to do? U U I T and done. So now you need to know what. Now don't query Fismo. Run this one, this command again, and see. Okay, what it shows. Now all the five rows is transferred to her. You see here, ELS, Texas, ADDC 02, right? Before it was in DC 01, now it's in DC 0. So my all roles has been transferred. So all roles has been transferred successfully, right? So you don't need to be worried about it. The role is only transferred now, the DC01, which is our Texas on our remote data center, our domain control number two, maybe in your case, it's gonna be fifth domain controller, or maybe it's 10th domain controller, or maybe 15th number domain controller. But that domain controller is now acting as a primary domain controller and is holding all the five FISMA roles. So now if you delete any other one, decommission any other one, it's not gonna have any issues. You see the test admin is here. 
it's already replicated with the old one automatically i didn't do nothing just i just refresh it right so so far we transfer all the roles to that means our active directory roles are migrated to our new server which is 2022 now what we can do we can decom so we can go for the second step so in in the steps here i shows like uh decom the both but in our case, in our case, what? In our case, actually, I have only one domain control. But if you, in your case, maybe you can have not only two, you can have maybe four, five, six. So whatever the machine you want to decom, that number of machines you need to build as a new Windows operating system 2022, and then add them as integrated. So migration is done. Now you can add more domain controls to get this one back, to get this one back, to get the other one back, to get the other one back, right? So now we need to do the decommission process. And after decommission process is done, then we will we'll go for the third one, which is here. With the new machine, then again, add the, this, this machine with the this domain, add this one with this domain, add the other machine with the, this domain controller as integrated domain controller. And after that, you can transfer the role again. So that's what we're gonna do. So now we'll do the decom process. So what we need to do for the demoting? So demoting we can do from the server manager. That way we added the role, the same way we're gonna remove the role. So you can do, you can do from the manage, remove roles and features. You can go from here, click next, click next. You can see here active directory domain service. You can uncheck this one. And then you can do that or you can just go to the local server and find out the like scroll down all the way down and then select activity domain service right click on it remove the roles and features it's going to take you the same window you see here it's going to take you the same window just uncheck it and remove the features so it will give you one window I will show you what is going to show you. Yeah, you see here exactly same thing is going to show you here like this. So that means you're okay. So now you see when you install the when you install when you install uh, activity roles in that time you're going to see after activity roles is installed is going to show you promote the do, promote this domain controller promote promote this machine as a domain controller. But when you remove the roles, what it shows, it says demote this domain controller. So you can click here, demote, and in here it says supply the credential for the perform this operation. So you can change, but the yellow administrator is the current user. So that user has the permissions, that user can do that. Or if, if you think this, the login user is not, not have that privilege access, you can change the user. But in my case, I know that Mr. has a superpower, so I don't need to change it. Just click on the force. So it says, if you go for this one, usually whenever you have a only, if you have a multiple domain controller in that case, uh, there should be another option. You should go for that one. I can show you here. It's gonna show you the last domain controller in that domain. Or force. So force one actually, force one actually will give you force one actually uh, force removal will leave the metadata. So after you decom it, you have to remove the metadata for this. But if you don't do it like this, just click next. Proceed with removal. Click next. Next, now the password, new administrator password.
click next review and you can say demote so it's demoting so if you want to demote multiple domain controller so you just need to follow the same service server is installed okay okay sorry because previously it, uh, there was a more information okay actually i installed here certificate service previously that's why it's failed no worries about it just close it and refresh it or it shows okay so Activity domain service, check, uncheck this one. Okay, so certificate authority is creating the problem. And active victory, remove feature, demote. Next. Proceed with next. In, in your case, maybe you don't have it because I install certificate service, uh, certificate server on the same CA, CA server on the same domain controller. That's why I'm having these issues. But in your case, you, you're not going to have that issues. So because server is installed, oh my goodness. So what I have to do, so the first thing is I have to remove, not both together. Let's try to remove only, uh, remove roles and features. Next, next. Just first remove the certificate authority. I actually like to do the service. Yeah, start automatically if you need it. Remove it. So feature removal. I'm just removing the certificate authority. It's gonna take a little bit time. So in the meantime, maybe I can pause the video and I will be back whenever it's done. All right, so um the certificate service role is uninstalled, it's removed. But in your case, maybe you don't need to do because I have it extra on this domain controller. That's why I'm removing this one first. So close it. And now I'm going to remove the next one, Active Directory, Remove Feature, Remote, Click next, next, remove, next, and the password. And the password is not, I think same. It's not match, nice match, okay. Click next and demote. So this is the way you can demote okay so successfully it says successfully demoted the active directory domain controller and it says you are about to be signed out the computer is being restarted because active directory domain service was installed or removed that's why right so it's removed and it's restarting so after it's restarted Let's log into the our. Um, let's see the status 
from our B center. Uh, just give me one second. This is our DNS, right? So this is our B center. This is our B center. Let me log into the B center. And then we will be able to see actually. I'm going to log into my B center. Uh oh, what happened? Oh, sorry, this is not domain join, that's why. Um, I can join it from here, maybe from here. At BS dot local. My caps lock is on. Let me stay there. Add PSPR dot local. Okay. So this is our old domain controller, which is I just decom. And, 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 and you see here. The machine is powered on. I'm going to log in. So the, still the machine is in. Okay, if you look at on the server manager, just open the server manager. Okay, so opening. In the meantime, I'm going to look for look uh, the new domain controller, the new one. So now it has all the roles and everything. And if you can look at the domain controller, what are you gonna see? So let's see, the BA is not showing anymore here. The BA is not showing anymore here. And now the domain controller is moved to the computer so you, you see here, LSBPW, BA, DC, this one, this computer object was before on under domain controller. So when you demote it, when you demote any domain controller, it will be a just a simple member of a domain. Now, this one is, is acting as just as a member, you see. It's, it's, still, it's, a, it's still in the domain, but it's a member of a domain. So you can demote this one because our target is to decom it and after decom, we're gonna, we demote it and then as a decommission process, we have to remove it from the domain. If you want, you can use this machine as a client machine, any other client like the, like as other machine. But we don't want to keep it. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna uh, decom it. So decom means you have to remove from the domain. So what is the process of removing from the domain? Um, you can log into the this machine or um, you can log in with, through this like this. Okay. And then you can just go to the local server. So now this machine is just work as a simple active, simple uh, client server. It's under domain. You see here, it's the computer object was before under domain controller. Now domain controller has only one computer object, which is our ADDC02 on the Texas data center, right? The one we built newly. And this one operating system is, what, what kind of operating system is this? 2022, you see here. And the old domain controller, when you demote it, the computer objects automatically move to the computer's OU here. And now it's going to acting as a just simple member server. But as a decommission process, we have to remove it, right? So I'm going to remove it. How are you going to remove it from the domain? So just click here, then change. You can say work, click here, work group then whatever you want it doesn't matter whatever whatever you want it doesn't matter click ok and click ok okay click ok and click ok it's going to be restart restart sometimes it's going to ask your administrative password but in this time it's not asking me um so you're gonna see this one will be disabled within short time. 
if you refresh this one, you see here, it has a disable sign. So that means the computer object is disabled. Now you can delete the computer object and also check the metadata. Check the metadata means, so this is the way I just demote one domain controller and also I remove it from the domain, which is a part of decommission. Now I can delete it from the environment. So this is just one domain controller. So if you want, if you have a multiple domain controller, you can just do the same way, same process, you can go for others. But one thing you have to remember, go to, um, uh, go to the server manager and go to the tools from your new domain controller, which is newly built and go there and go to the site and services. Make sure all metadata is removed. Site, default servers, and you see here, still, still this one is there, right? So what are you gonna do? Delete, yes. And use delete sub three server control, yes. Okay, so now everything is removed, all the metadata is removed. And also last thing is the computer object. Delete this computer object. So now delete, yes. So everything now deleted, nothing left. So do the same thing, same process. So Decom, before I decom, I did what I did, I did uh, demote it, not promote, demote it from the Active Directory. Then the, the server becomes a member of a domain controller. Uh, so become, uh, become a member of a domain and it's the object move from domain controller to OU to computers OU and then remove the machine from the domain and also clean up all the metadata like from the sites and also the computer object. The one is shows disabled, I just delete it. And also delete it from here. And so now what are you gonna do? Simply from the B center, from the B center, what you can do? Just right click on it. And then Power off, yes, it's power off, right? And then right click, right click and delete from the disk. So delete from the disk, not inventory, not remove from the inventory. If you delete from the inventory, it's gonna be stay there. So before I delete it, I want to just copy the name because um, So I want to actually match with this one BPW TX. Same thing, right? Same name, okay. Anyway, I'm gonna have the same name for the other one. So I just, just copied and I'm going to delete this one. Delete from the disk. So it's deleted from your environment. It's gone, it's completely gone, right? So now you see here, ELS BPW ADDC01, I have a, another server, this is, uh, 2022 server, this one is 2022 server. I build it here, if I, I can log in, I can show you here, this is the one. This is the server, it's a 2022, nothing there, it's just newly deployed. And ELS BBWB, I have the same name already assigned because I make it ready. You wanna do the same thing after you build, you wanna do, so now I need to assign the IP address, the same IP, but I'm going to change the VMware inventory name because it, it's gonna make me confused. So I can say rename and provide the same, the old name. The old server is already removed, right? So you can have the same name again. Okay, so I have the same name again, but the server is, is a new server. And if you look at here, the, this name I also changed. And now I just need to assign an IP address of it. Okay, let's assign the IP address. Properties, uncheck the IPv6 and go to the IPv4 and use the following IP address. So 192.168.1.2, um, right? The previous domain control number one was two and that one is completely removed from the environment. And make sure you're gonna check the DNS entry. Let's check the DNS. Is there any DNS left? 
So I didn't see any two IP. DC01 is not there, right? Not there, right? Okay. And also let's check the reserve lookup zone. Oh, 192, 168, okay. Let's check this one, refresh. Is there any two IP? No. So that's also removed automatically. So whenever we're gonna add it again, it's gonna be created again, DNS entry, also reserve lookup zone. Forward lookup zone and reverse lookup zone both have a DNS entry. So DNS entry on the forward lookup zone and then a PTO record on the reverse lookup zone. It's gonna create automatically when you're gonna add it. So let's go here, assign the IP address, 255.255.255 and then 192.168.1.1 and then 192.168. Now, okay, so 1.4. So our domain controller, our domain, con oh, sorry, our DNS, this is the DNS server. So DNS server IP, if you look at here, DNS server IP, this is our DNS server, right? So our DNS server IP is four. That's what I, I put it for, for this machine and also for this machine. That's it, click OK and click OK. Maybe you're not gonna get the internet, we're gonna um, manage the internet later on. If I add the 192.168.1.1 in both machine, then you will gonna have a internet. So now I will be disconnected from here because this machine was before this machine, right? So this machine was before added with the, this IP. Now it's IP is changed. So now you can say IP number two. And now maybe you can log in. Okay. So I log back in, but no internet, but we'll manage internet later on. I just need to put it here, the I, uh, the default gateway IP address here. As alternate DNS, if I put it the default gateway IP address, then I will get the internet. But I don't need internet right now, without internet because it's locally, LAN is fine. Okay. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna add this machine with the second, um, this domain control. Actually now this one is our primary domain control. Because we know already we transfer the, all the phase model, right? That's we already know. So now in this server, what are we gonna do? We have already, what happened? Okay. So we already configured the IP address, it has a name. Now we need to install the roles, add roles the same way, the way we did for the this one, same way. Click next, next, and Next, what is what kind of roles? It's Active Directory, Domain Service Role, right? Add feature, click Next, click Next, click Next, and install. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. After it's installed, we have to promote this machine as a domain controller. And again, what's the operating system? This is 2022 operating system, right? That's why we transfer the FISMO roles to the other one now. This one has a phase model, but whenever we build this one as an integrated domain controller, after that, we're gonna transfer the FISMO again from two to one. So you just need to, you just, you just have to wait until it's finished. And I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back whenever it's done. All right, so the, RDDC01, which is Virginia site, right? Is done. It's come like, uh, it's done means like we install the uh, Active Directory domain service role here and just close it. And after you close it, you're gonna see here there is a notification. So if you click here, it's gonna say promote this server to a domain controller. Click here. And then you're gonna get the same window the way you added the this machine, right? So same way this one. So which one you should select? The first option, which one is by default selected? Add a domain controller to an existing domain. Our We are not going to change our domain. So it, that's the existing domain, right? So what, what I need to click, select on the click on select, and then you have to verify with your uh, administrative account. It can be your own administrative account or maybe the uh, domain admin. Okay, what happened?
Okay, anyway, just go back. Click here, promote and minimize. Select here and then D M I N I S T R A T Word Administrator add ELS.com, which is the main administrator, but you, sh you shouldn't be used like this in enterprise level. Why? Because whenever you're going to work as a system administrator or senior engineer, you should have your administrative account and you, you're going to use your administrative account there. My lab, that's why I'm using this one. I, do, I don't have any other account. So ELS.com is already found. You see here, it's already come to the, uh, this uh, search bar. And click next. Okay. Same thing, you can, you can remember like, uh, we, we are not going to install DNS server on this machine, on this domain controller, because we have a separate DNS server. So just only the global catalog, nothing else. And DSRM password, make sure you remember this password because whenever you want, it, it, later on, whenever you're gonna decom this machine, you have to use the same password. So that's why um, I, I used all the time the same password and also organization, they use their master password. Okay, any domain controller, or you can select. So I'm going I'm say like any domain controller because if you have a multiple domain controller, you can say any domain controller, click next. And it's going to be installed um, the database, log files and sysball folders, everything on the uh, C drive. Click next. And then click next. And it's gonna verify, okay. No, no like uh, issues found, just only one warning is fine. Click install and it's gonna take a little bit time and whenever it's done, it's gonna be reboot automatically. And after the reboot, we're gonna log in and that's done. So just wait a couple of minutes. So now it says you are about to sign out because installation is done and just clo close and it's gonna be reboot, okay, automatically. All right, so you can see the status from here, from the vCenter. I just open uh, the server from the vCenter, vSphere web client console on the browser, and you can see the status, like how it's rebooting or what's the status right now. So vCenter 8 and uh, Windows Server 2022, both are really faster than other version. So we are almost done here. I'm just waiting for this machine to boot it up and then we're gonna check a couple of things. Then we are done. And also we can check here before, uh, like it, it, it's taking time in the meantime, we can check the, our Texas uh, domain controller. We can check this one. Um, so in here, if you go to the tools, sites and services, okay, refresh, you see? This one come back because we just added, right? So this is one proof. We got back our DC01 with new Windows operating system, which is 2022. And then also check the activity users and computers. If you refresh, so on under the computer, there is nothing because we deleted from there. Now domain controller, if you click domain controller, Within short time, you will already see, you see, we get back our primary domain controller. 
this is 0, 1. But right now, this one doesn't have the phase model because this one has the phase model. So if you want, you can transfer it to here. And how I'll show you again. I'm just doing the server. OK, the server is almost put it up. Uh, Applying computer settings, so it needs to be ha it needs to have some settings to be done, like on the background, De default domain security, and also group policy. Okay, everything is done. So I can I'm just going to cancel this one, close this one. I'm going to RDP on this machine. So RDP on this machine, that means I can now use this one because I have all the information here already with the same name. The first time I'm logging as a domain administrator on this machine, that's why it's taking us a few minutes to configure the user profile. Every time, whenever you log in any machine with a new user, it's going to create a new profile. It's set up a new desktop for the user. That's why it will take time if you log in first time. So we have both domain controller now. All right, so we got back here. All right, so everything looks good. And if I go, you can see here, everything looks good. And the operating system, you see Microsoft Windows Server 2022. This is 01, right? This is 01. So we are up, like we just updated, it's called a side-by-side -side migration. We updated our both domain controller to 2022. All right, so I get back my DC01 and I have my DC02 and all of them has the um, same operating system, both, both domain controller is Windows 2022, Windows 2022. So now I'm gonna transfer the role from the Texas DC0 to 201. So how? In the same way, I'm not going to, uh, I, I'm going to run the same thing, a query FISMO again. So NetDome query FISMO is 100% is shows it, the five FISMO roles is sitting on uh, DC02. And I'm logging to the DC02. I'm running this command from the DC02. And now I'm going to transfer from the same place so what I have to do, NTDS util, then row the maintenance mode, and then to server, instead of two, what I'm going to say, one. And in here, Texas, not Texas, it's a BA, right? BA. Okay, I think okay, let's 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 remove this one. Oh, actually, I have to say connect server. Connections. And then after the connections, then I have to say, To server okay so i'm going to remove this one and i, I want to connect with this is zero one right i'm just copying this one copy and paste dot com okay so now q u i t quit and and then you know run the transfer Schema master, okay. 
and see do you want to transfer to dc01 yes i want okay and then master domain naming master yes i want okay it's done then read master yes okay now pdc right pdc yes and say yes and now infrastructure master and yes okay all are done then qit quit qit and done and now netdom query filmo the c all right so now we get back all the five fismo role to our domain controller number one so now domain controller number one is a primary domain controller and there is another thing I will explain because in this video, I don't want to make this video too long. So I'll create a separate video to show you actually how you can raise domain functional level. So right now the current domain functional level is in Windows Server 2016 because our environment, our previous environment was in 2016. If you have a mixed mode, so the lowest version will be the domain functional level. So if you have a 2016, 2019, and 2022 mixed uh, domain controller, in that case, the lowest version should be the your current domain functional level. So we had before 2016, that's why, but we need to raise it because right now everything is 2022. So I'll create a separate video and we'll show you actually how you can raise. This is not um, emergency or not important, but if you want, you can um, raise the domain functional level. So I'll, I'll, I'll create a separate video for that. And also in the next video, I'll show you guys actually how you can create, uh, how you can upgrade the DNS server. So right now I have one DNS server, I will upgrade it to 2022 and I'm gonna create a total two DNS server. So, and I'll show you in the next video. And till then stay safe. And um, if you think this video is helpful, please give a big thumbs up. And if you like this video, also give a big thumbs up. And if you're new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and also share this video with your friends or coworker uh, if you think it's, it's helpful for them. And until then, stay safe and thank you. I'll see you on the next video.